Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of In Distress, a podcast where I talk about nonsense in the comfort of my childhood bedroom. Um, Welcome to this week's episode. I'm really nervous about it. I have actually started this episode over at least six times at this point. It's like 3 a.m. in the morning and I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling unwell in the head. I am. But I really know that I need to record this episode and I want to show up for myself and do that so that it's on time and I'm not beating myself up about not doing it. But I'm really struggling, like really. And it's truly because I know I've been talking about this week or no, for the past couple of weeks on this episode about how I'm just really trying to get out of my comfort zone and grow and learn and do all the things And not that growth is supposed to be easy or that any of it has been easy. It's just, it's not looking how I thought it was going to look right now. Like, that's the thing that kind of sucks about learning in any capacity, whether it's school or whether it's life or whatever. Like, you don't really know what it's supposed to look like. And because I don't know what it's supposed to look like, I'm not loving what I'm seeing. I'm going to be honest. And I'm really stuck and caught in this like constant cycle of like what feels like dealing with the same issues and the same emotions all the time. And because I'm just going through those same cycles of dealing with those emotions it feels like I'm not doing anything or I'm not moving forward in my life. And this is something that's really troubling me and has been troubling me for the past few days. And there are a lot of times that I just want to sit there and I just want to quit. I'm not going to lie, like not quit life. I don't mean that. Um, But what I mean is like, Sometimes like this is like too much. Like I've talked about before, like life is hard. I think that it's important that we acknowledge that. And then we work on accepting what the rest of that looks like. And my out view, and I really hate this. I hate that like your out view on life changes so drastically depending on where you're at. Because I really try my best to be optimistic and, you know, to like hope for the best. Like I, for the most part, go in like into the next day thinking, well, you know, like it's kind of like getting out of bed in the morning to go to work. You don't want to, but the reason that I personally get up is just in hopes that today will be better than the last day. And this was definitely something that I had to think today because I had a really bad day at work on Tuesday. So when it was time for me to wake up this morning, I was like, girl, I don't think so. Like my body was dragging, it was lagging. And I was like, I just, I just simply don't think that this is what I need to be doing right now. And when I feel that way, it kind of makes me question like what I'm doing with my life. So we're talking about that constant cycle of feeling like I'm just going through the same problems and I'm going through the same emotions that come along with those problems and this feels this feels terrible too it does and I just I just don't know really I just don't know what I'm doing with my life like my mom is kind of like or my parents are like oh like you don't like your job and like I don't love my job I don't hate it there are really bad days, yes, but everybody has really bad days at work. But regardless, they're like, oh, like, you really just need to be looking for another job. And I'm like, girl, I don't know what I want to do. And my parents are definitely, like, of the mind of, like, just go out there and, like, just, you know, find something for now. And I'm fine with finding something for now. It's just that I don't, I just don't want to. Like, I I haven't even been in the workforce that long. I've had a job since I was 18, but I don't I don't like this. And I know that everybody says that, but I I just really don't like this. Like this is not enjoyable, it's not fun. Like I really question many days and this is going to be a dark episode, I think, 
this is one of my darkest days. It's 3.20 a.m. I Things get a little dark up here around 3, okay? Honestly, after the clock strikes midnight, I start feeling a little, a little unwell up here. I start thinking too much. But you know what? That might be what makes this episode great because I'm actually really nervous about it because I was really proud of last week's episode and I was like, dang, this is going to be a great episode or yeah, let's go into this week thinking that it's going to be a great episode and I'm already starting out the episode in distress, which is the vibe. That is the vibe. Anyways, back to what I was saying. My parents are like, yeah, like just go and just get something for now and I just don't want to get something for now. Like... I want to focus and do the things that I really like and I really care about and I'm passionate about. And and I don't really know what that what my life looks like with that right now, but right now I know that the job that I have makes makes and leaves time for me to do things that I like to do for real. Like and I just I don't know like when I had my last job and I was in school full time, it was like I was not making time, like I wasn't making time to show up for myself and showing up for me looks like doing this podcast and being consistent. It looks like making time to create content, whether it's on TikTok or just, I don't know, editing videos and stuff like, or whether it's like writing or playing music or whatever, or reading, I don't know, or painting. Like now with this job, I have a lot of time to do and make time to do the things that I enjoy doing. And I, if I'm honest, like, I don't think that I can say that about a lot of my life. I don't think that I've ever really made time to do the things that I enjoy and do the things that I like. And when I step back and ask myself, why not? I'm like, I don't have an answer. I am like, why not? Like, why haven't I taken the time to do the things that I enjoy and I care about? But it's because I feel like the expectations of other people or where I'm supposed to be in life are much greater than the things that I like, if that makes sense. Like, it feels like because I'm not getting married, I'm not dating anybody, I'm not having kids, I'm not off having this amazing, successful career that I'm behind. And when you feel behind, it doesn't really leave it you're thinking about ways to catch up all the time and that's not really leaving a lot of space for you to do what you like to do and to be who you are and I'm just really struggling with that right now like I'm struggling with that on top of like the whole oh getting out of my comfort zone and blah 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 and that's all great and stuff but the days when I'm not feeling optimistic about life and the days that I'm like getting punched in every corner of my life that's not the easiest outlook to have like it's really hard to be like I'm just grateful for life like there are a lot of days when I'm just like I'm just so grateful for the people that are in my life and the things that I'm learning and blah 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 my job everything whatever there are many days that are like that but there are also those really low days like today and a lot of times I'm like if you can just push through the low days it's going to be okay but sometimes I get tired of being my own motivational speaker like sometimes I'd be like girl let's just sit here and wallow in it I think that that would be that would be more fun it'd be more fun to sit here and just be sad but I know that if I sit here and just let myself be sad for like a day or three I'm not going to be able to get out of there at least for a while and because like once you like get into that mindset it's just really hard to get out of there and I'm talking about for people who don't suffer from like clinical depression and stuff okay yeah okay sometimes it can be really hard to get out of that hole like once you dig it and I'm trying not to dig it I'm hoping that this episode is actually helpful for me, but I'm not going to lie. The fact that we're only nine minutes in is extremely daunting to me, and I don't want the episode to be bad. I really don't. Like, I have this expectation for myself that everything I do has to be great. It has to be perfect, and I really wish that I could let that go. I really wish that I could let a lot of things go that I think, um, because I don't think being a perfectionist is ever going to help me in terms of things that I want to do with my life. I just don't think that. And it's, it's been proven to me on countless occasions, but it's just really hard to let go of that expectation of wanting to be great 
And this actually leads me to this interview that I watched, uh, the one that I mentioned last week about Allie Krieger. I ended up watching that interview and I talked about this last week and, you know, she was kind of like, I just love to compete. I love to win. Um, and I want to be elite. I don't want to be average. Like, I don't want to just be like, oh, any old player that ever played the sport. Like, I want to be great. And that's typically, I feel like that's the mindset that every for that everybody for the most part has. You know, you only want to do your best. And that's how I feel about this podcast. That's how I feel about TikTok. That's how I feel about anything that I make or create or put out or eventually want to put out is that I feel like it has to be perfect because if it's not perfect to me, then I'm not going to be able to handle any like criticism or backlash that it gets. And so, but at the same time that I say that, it's also like you can't catch everything that somebody won't like about it. And that's why, like, a lot of times I think, I don't know, that's, I think that's why a lot of artists are kind of like, yeah, you just have to go out there and just do what you like to do. And then the people who like it will like it and the people who don't won't. But you can't really worry about that. But, like, I really worry about that. Like, I really worry about that. Like, because at some point, like, I want to, like, oh, like, I would like this podcast to, like, be able to be, like, another source of income for me. Like, I want my content stuff to be another source of income. Like, at some point, I want to be able to make music and do that well and to the point that I can maybe quit my job or whatever job I have in the future. And if things aren't absolutely perfect and feel bulletproof to me, I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to let it out. I don't want to let go of it. And so that's how we end up here. Yeah. And that's one topic that we had for today. Jumping into the next, it was going to be about like expectations that you have for other people. And I've talked about that a lot today. And as you've heard, I have expectations for myself. Naturally, you have expectations for other people like and and I feel like having expectations is definitely like a gray it's a gray thing. It's a gray area because I feel like everybody should have expectations for the people in their life. And at the same time that everybody should have expectations for people in their lives, I think that it's also not fair to like hold people accountable for the most part, depending on what it is. I feel like it's not fair to kind of judge people for not meeting your expectations 100% of the time or when they do make a mistake and don't meet your standards because it's like it just it just really comes down to like how would you feel if somebody like had standards for you and then you didn't meet them and they just berate you because you didn't do something that you didn't even know that you they needed you to do and I'm just I'm really struggling with that. I'm struggling with having expectations for other people and how I handle them not meeting my expectations or being let down by people. Because like I said, like it's a great area of like, I understand that like sometimes people just can't meet your expectations or maybe you ask too much of people, but I think it's important to have expectations for people because if you don't have them, then how will you know when it's time to let somebody go or to let something go and that's going on in your life? Like if you don't have expectations, you'll never really know when you need to do that. And so there's that. And then there's like, oh, the other side of me that's like, okay, well, somebody had expectations for me and I didn't meet them and they blame me for that and they judge me for that. That's not fair because I didn't even know that those were the expectations for me. And I think that that's where sometimes a lot of people get disappointed in like friendships and relationships is that like, I see a lot on TikTok of like people talking about how somebody was a bad friend to them. And a lot of times it's very extreme cases of like this person went and they slept with my boyfriend or they cheated on me or it'll be like they stole from me. Um, I let them borrow money and they never gave it back. And now they're they're gone. I'm never going to see them again like stuff like that those are very extreme cases and then there are cases of like oh like my friend isn't communicating 
with me anymore or, you know, like something else. And I think that that can be really tough. I really do. Because sometimes also people might think that they're meeting your expectations, but they're not. And it's like sometimes it's like maybe some people can only give you so much. Like maybe maybe in that relationship, mm, they can be there for you and they can be, you know, loyal and trusting, but they're they're failing in some other department. And I feel like I feel like it's okay to not be 100% on to someone's expectations sometimes. But I think it's more I think things get shaky when it's like that repeat offender thing of like, oh, well, you you did this and then you also went and did that and then I asked you not to do that and I set that boundary for you and then you went and crossed it anyways. I think that's where things get a little muddy. I feel like this episode is boring, but I really need it for me. This is my therapy. This might be just like a week off. Yeah, this might be the week that people just take off on this one. Anyways, but the other thing that was actually supposed to be connected to that topic of having expectations for people was getting stuck dealing with the same issues or being stuck dealing with the same emotions. And so with that, I mean like, sorry, I actually need to drink some water because my voice sounds, she sounds rough. Anywho, um, getting stuck dealing with the same issues or emotions, I just feel like I'm stuck in this really bad cycle of like dealing with what seems to be like the same issue. Like, I feel like I'm not experiencing too many new things in my life anymore. It's just with different people in different environments now. And And what's annoying about this cycle of life, at least the one that I'm in right now, is that it it's it feels like no matter how much I feel like I've grown or how much I do something, I just I just haven't gotten it right yet. I haven't gotten it right yet because every time that it happens, I'm not I'm not like I don't have the immediate solution to it. I don't have the answer. I feel like I'm just, I I genuinely feel like I just can't do anything right. And I'm really, I'm struggling with that so bad. So bad. Like, so bad. And it feels embarrassing because it feels like I'm just supposed to be in a different point in my life where I'm supposed to be able to handle situations that I've seen before better than I do. But I can't. I just can't. For me personally, I don't, I don't think, yeah, a lot of people have told me in the past, not a lot, let me not do too much on me. Some people have told me in the past that sometimes I can get a little irritable, I can get a little angry, and I'm quick to just like shut down about things. And I took that, I took that feedback. I did, I did, I took those responses, I did in the peer review, I took, I took the feedback and I, and I tried to consume it, take it in and work on it. And for the past couple of years, I feel like I've done very well at doing that, like not getting angry too quickly and really trying my best to have patience, which we'll get to that later, more on that later. But I feel like I've been doing a really great job of that. And then it's like something happens, boop, to test like that of whether or not I I really worked on and I've done well and it's like it's like it's like my body it's like I go into shock or something and I I'm not handling the situation how I've handled the situation before and then I'm sitting there I'm embarrassed I'm like I'm beating myself up I'm like girl like you had one job you've seen this before and you you didn't get it right this time and sometimes you just have to give yourself grace on that like I'm I'm kind of starting to be at the point where and I never thought I would get here so this is shocking. I'm definitely getting to the point of like I get really upset with myself when I mishandle things and I and because of that then I end up feeling really bad and I just beat myself up about it and I feel really guilty about doing whatever I did. 
and more recently I've had more I've had more instances of I I don't not necessarily not saying that I didn't do anything and not saying that I don't hold myself accountable but I'm starting to feel a lot less bad about the things that I'm doing like sometimes I don't feel like I did anything wrong and I think that that's okay I think I think that I get nervous about not taking accountability or responsibility for things because, you know, you never want to be that girl who doesn't ever look in the mirror and doesn't know how to, you know, have a real talk with herself and be like, hey, you messed up here. But on this, on these things the past few days, like, I just, I feel like I can't do anything right. But when I sit there and try to tell myself like, okay, well, and I I try to beat myself up about it. I'm like, beat yourself up about what? And then moreover, sometimes, sometimes, hold on, hold on, stay with me, stay with me. I don't even know if I'm making sense right now. Sometimes like I'll do something and then like people don't react the way that I think they're going to react or they don't react how I want them to react. And I think that like you can't even really be... And it's like, I want to be mad at myself and hold myself accountable and responsible for making that person feel that way because it wasn't my intention. However, I can't really control how somebody else takes the things that I do or say. Like, all I can really control is what I do, what I say, what I think, what I share. Like, and then if they react badly, it's kind of like, why Why are you beating yourself up about it? Like, and hold on, there's a caveat to that. I don't want people to think that just because that anytime they have an argument with somebody or anytime they have a disagreement with somebody, it's not their fault because that's not it. And I'm not even saying that I'm blameless in every single situation that I experience. It's just more recently, I think that I'm starting to give myself grace. I don't know, I don't know. But I'm so used to beating myself up about stuff and always constantly overthinking every single scenario and thinking about, oh, what would happen if this possibility happened? Okay, well, what would happen if that possibility happened? And what happened if the third possibility happened? But what if the third possibility got in the way of the second possibility? And sometimes you don't need to do all that. Like sometimes it really is just, you can't control how other people are going to feel about what you do. And then until it's resolved and you talk about it what's there to sit there and be mad at yourself for sometimes sometimes it just comes down to that sometimes it is your fault I'll be the first to say that sometimes it is some of y'all stinking booty at sorry I'm sorry sometimes it's some of y'all's fault like some of the stuff that you do it's it's literally you did that like that was your fault you need to take accountability okay and be an adult and be serious But there are other times when really, I'm sure that I did something, but it wasn't my intention and now we're here and there's no reason for me to sit here and be mad at me because you already mad at me. So there's no reason for me to sit and be mad at me. Like, I just kind of have to go around thinking like everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to work out. It's going to be okay. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about today, I think. Um, I have a couple more things I guess I want to talk about. There's some things that like I write down and I'm like, oh, that would be a good story to tell on the podcast. But sometimes the stories require so much energy that I don't have by the end of the day. So like right now it's it's 3.30 a.m. on a Thursday and I'm recording this. And I had this story about how I went to Quick Trip earlier today. And I was going to tell it because I had told it on TikTok and I had told it on my private story on Snapchat. And I was like, that'll be the perfect story to start the podcast with. And then too many things in my actual life happened. So then this turned into a 24 minute therapy session. And so now it's like I could tell the quick trip story, but uh, I felt like it would just it would really ruin the vibe for me, you know, and that's the struggle here. I think that I'm wondering if I'll be proud of this episode tomorrow. And the answer to that is probably no. I'm still going to post it though, but I'm feeling shaky about it. But to be fair, whenever I share my feelings or emotions on something that's happening to me personally, I do a lot of, I have a lot of anxiety around that. I have time anxiety actually as well. And, and I just, anyways, but 
I went to Quick Trip. I'll still tell the story. It'll just not be high energy. If you want the high energy version, go check TikTok. TikTok's in the link tree of the description below. Um, But yeah, I went to Quick Trip today and there were some Latin people in there and they were speaking Spanish. And I don't know if you've ever been to a Quick Trip, but the counter space is quite minimal. Yeah, it's quite minimal. And I went in there and I was really excited because I happened to be passing by Quick Trip on my way to work because I went to go get a pizza. So I went in and I have like an addiction to this one slushy and I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want people going around and drinking it up because it already be out of service half the time when I go over there to the quick trip. Okay. So I went to, yeah, I went in there and there were some people speaking Spanish over there by the counter. And if you've ever been to a quick trip again, you know, that the slushy station, it doesn't matter which one you go to for real. Well, actually there's a couple that are more spacious, but in my town, the one by the slushies is not spacious. There's a counter and it has the lids and the napkins and the straws and some other stuff stacked up on it. And then there's like the counter space and in there are like the little tra- the counters with trash can holes. So I go in there and fill up my cup and I'm like, yes, I'm so glad that my slushie is here. I fill up my little cup and then I go to grab the lid. And so I turn around and the people, they were eating lunch like on the counter And I was kind of like, this is low key, not the place to be eating lunch and yapping. Like this is not the place for that. Um, But I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get in there and say, excuse me. And I think that my social anxiety is actually getting better because I think that I handled this situation a lot better than I would have in the past. In the past, I might have just walked away with that cup with no lid on it. Okay. But I'm growing. I'm learning. I'm changing. Anywho. So I went and I was like, oh, like, and mind you, they're like two rows deep of people. It's not just one little like, oh, a couple of them. No, there was like eight eight or nine people standing in that spot and there's not enough space for all that so I went and I was like oh like excuse me like oh excuse me and they were talking quite loud so I was like oh oh like excuse me excuse me excuse me and then and then I I was able to grab the lid and then put it on there and it kind of annoyed me because they kind of looked at me funny And honestly, white people have done this to me too when I've been like, excuse me, but it's also like, okay, well, hooker, you're right in the way of the lids. Like, what did you want? Like, excuse me, excuse me for wanting something to drink and and needing a lid for my cup and you right in the way. Anyways, but a lot of older white people do that to me because there was this one time see and there was this one time I went to quick trip and I really wanted a slushie so I went up in there and got my slushie and there was this older white couple and they were right in the way mind you they parked right next to me right and I went to go fill out my slushie cup so I filled it up and then they were in the way of the lid and I was like excuse me and then I got my lid and I got my straw and I left and you I paid for it and I left and then when I went out to my car I had a couple of slushies because I, I think I had like two or three because I had gotten my parents one or something. And so I stacked two of them up on the hood of my car so that I could like open my door and put the drinks down in there. And those bum hookers, first of all, first of all, they had left the quick trip earlier than me. Okay. They had left out them doors like, like a, like a minute or two or three before I left because I was back in there with my sister. Yeah. Yeah. And she was looking for stuff to get in the gas station. And so when we got out of there, I told you they were parked next to me. Those hookers are in the car. I stacked the slushy on top of my car and I go and open my door, you know, unlock the door. I got to get my stuff situated. And, and I hear honk, honk. And I would look back. I was like, who is honking? Like what, who was honking? And I finally put the piece together that it was those bum old farts that were that were parked next to me and I was like honestly you hookers are trifling as hell because 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 and I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna tell you why they're trifling because y'all had three four minutes to get up out of here and park and back up out of this parking space before I got out here now I got my door open you can't back out that doesn't sound like a me problem that doesn't sound like a me problem because you should have got up and left and that's why all white people are miserable hacks anyway sorry that was a lot that was a lot. 
it was like the anger came back and overtook me and it like took over my body and that's on me that's my bad but you don't literally don't have to honk like had you given me a second I could have got my drinks together and you could have waited because you sure as hell did wait three to four minutes while before I came up out of here to back that car up that doesn't sound like a me problem that doesn't sound like a me problem to me anyways And this actually brings me to my road rage situation because I'm not typically a girl who says she has road rage. I'm not one who would claim. I don't really know anybody who would go around claiming they have road rage. I don't think there's anything to be proud of. I don't think that. But I just really struggle and lack patience on like an extreme level a little bit sometimes when I get in the car and it's really just that people do stupid shit all the time like because why are you why are you as a driver pulling out in front of me and now I have to hit the brakes and I have to slow down why are you as a driver riding all up on me tailgating you know it's a school zone first of all and it yeah it says um I think it says like school zone 25 or 35 miles per hour during such and such time but also I'm not about to sit here and get a ticket with you just because you have zero patience like I'm not doing that I'm not getting a ticket my dad already told me if I get a ticket he can't give me off that car insurance and I'm not paying for my own insurance girl I don't have the funds I don't have the money and I'm not doing that. Like, there's a couple things that I won't do. And one of them is speeding up because somebody is riding all up on me. Like, girl, you can go around at the next at the next juncture. You can go around. Anyways, but I just feel like today my road rage, it just really, it took another level. But like, I feel that way every day. And when I was driving to Atlanta because I was going to school at Georgia State and I would commute, I thought that like my road rage would never be that bad again. However, when I left my house to go get this pizza before work today, first of all, I got on my street and, and, and I understand that it's raining. And when it's raining, there are some people out there who just feel like they need to drive slower and okay, I'll let you have it. Maybe you drive five miles slower This hooker was driving 10 miles slower. We're supposed to be doing 45. I was barely hitting 35. I was hitting like 32. And I was like, there's actually no way. And and there was a point when I could have gone around them, yeah. But there was this one time in high school that I had this little, um, what were those things called? We had an assembly. The whole school was there in the gym. And I remember some people came in and they were talking about, and this guy, I think he had gone to jail. Mm -hmm. This guy had gone to jail because one day after school, he was taking somebody home and he was trying to go around somebody. I think it was like a bus or something, or it must not have been a bus. I think it was a car or something. And he tried to go around them in a no passing zone. So like, you know how like the, the lines on the road will be dotted or like solid full dashes. It was like that. And he went around the car But when he went around the car, there was a trash truck coming towards him, I think. And he tried to swerve off the road to avoid the collision. But that's what the other truck tried to do. And I don't even know if it was the trash truck. I don't know if I remembered that wrong or not. Anyways, but he tried to swerve. But the other vehicle also tried to swerve. And then they collided and he lived but his friend that he had in the car with him died and then he went to jail and ever since I heard that story unless I have like the clearest view of being able to make it nobody's coming at all like within a mile I don't go around people and um the road rage definitely flared up because I could have gone around him around the car but it was one of those trucks that has like the the extra piece on like the bed of the truck that like kind of makes it like look like a van it was like that and then I couldn't I couldn't see around it and they were going so slow that I couldn't like 
even if I had tried to slow down to see around them, it just wasn't going to work. It just wasn't going to work. And the lane was ending. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to die. Um, so yeah, but they were driving mad slow. So then, you know, they end up turning right at the light and I'm like, God bless, because it really just took me four minutes to get a mile down the road. Thanks a lot. So, you know, I go and I make my turn and then, you know, I start heading towards my pizza. And while I'm heading towards my pizza, I get behind somebody else who again is going slow as hell. And I was like, this is actually sick. Like I'm sitting here, like I'm so nervous. I'm about to be late for work or something. I was just nervous. So anyways, I ended up getting the pizza and really girl, before I even, it's always when I need to do something. Before I even got to the pizza, it it was a Papa John's pizza and I was going to the thing because we have like a little drive through window at ours. Like I'm, you're never going to catch me going inside to pick up a pizza, like girl, please. And so I was going to the window. When I turn in to go towards the window, there's a car in front of me and it's this lady who's not even, who's not even going to Papa John's, mind you. She's not even going to Papa John's. She just has her car parked in front of the window and she's cleaning out her car of trash and putting it in the trash can that's out in front of the Papa John's. And I was sitting there like, you cannot be any more unserious than this moment. Like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, I just... And and it doesn't even seem like a serious offense, for real. But once you've just been behind one of the slowest drivers in history and then another slow driver in history just to get to where you needed to go and for somebody to be in the way of the Papa John's drive through window, dumping out the trash in their car, these kind of things build. I don't think, and nobody just starts off raging at the road. There's levels to this. There's levels to this. It doesn't start at full-on anger or screaming. It doesn't start there. It starts with minor offenses. And it's not even, driving slow isn't even a minor offense. That's like, that's, that's a heavy offense right there. That'll drive anybody mad. Anywho. So then I got the pizza and that's when I went and started making my way to work. And that's when I went to the quick trip. And that's when I had to fight for my life to get that lid on my slushy cup. And then I was on my way to work. And truthfully, on the way to work is when somebody was, they were riding all up on me. And I'm like, girl, this is a school zone. I'm not speeding up for you, babes. I'm not getting a ticket for you just because you want to go a little bit faster. This is not fast and furious. And I won't be joining you getting a ticket if you do. And what's crazy was they definitely stayed behind me for many miles when they could have passed me. And there was a cop sitting about two miles down the road. And I was like, hmm, wow. Imagine if I wasn't going the right speed limit and I didn't save you because you never got around me. Imagine, imagine that. Now that was That felt like karma. That felt like peace to me because it was like, wow, I drove correctly. And when it came down to it, I did not only save me, I saved the girl behind me. Wow. I was was really feeling like an icon that day. I was. Anywho, but then I made it to work, which is, oh, super tragic. I I hate work. Ah, Boo, boo. And um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. The work front no bueno like I said I would like to have a new job but I really want my job is it so wrong to want your job to be something you enjoy it seems like it seems like it is and honestly nobody's really admitting it outside of like the internet but I'm pretty sure we're in a recession and um, that's becoming very apparent to me by the lack of jobs that there are to really apply for. And even when you do apply for them, you're not hearing anything or you see how many applicants a job has and you're like, bro, there ain't no way 400 other people have applied to this job. Like, I'd be like, yeah, well, of course, I'm not going to get it, obviously. But yeah, anywho, let's see what else we're working about. Oh. I was actually going to talk about this. This is the this is the last thing on the podcast. I have absolutely nothing else to say. Um, well, actually, I did have one more thing to say. I might add that in after. But 
You know how parents are always like, or at least when you were younger, they were like, yeah, yeah. Um, they would just blame everything bad that would happen in your life on your phone. And they'd be like, oh, and you'd be like, I'm just not doing well in math. And it'd be, it's because that phone. That's what it's because of that phone. And then it'd be like, yeah, like me and my friends are arguing and, and, and I just don't know what's going on. It's because of that phone. Like everything was always because of that phone. And honestly... I thought it was very off base at the time because it felt extremely off base. Like, what does my phone have to do with me beefing? What does my phone have to do with me struggling to focus? And it, it's actually all very much connected. But lately, I've really just been feeling like maybe my mama was right. Maybe it is because of that phone. Like, I've talked about this before, like... And it's not even that my TikTok comments are so disgusting and like, uh, disgusting. Wow. Like, oh, these people are, are, they so mean to me. Not all the time, but when I post a video here and there and it doesn't go to the right audience, that can be rough. Or sometimes because I'm constantly looking at how many views I got, how many likes I got, how many listens I got. A lot of my anxiety or like a lot of the things that I'm stressing with about or struggling with or like that feeling of perfection or feeling like I'm not meeting my own expectations. A lot of that comes from, yes, my phone. A lot of like me being upset about some of the things that are going on in my life right now are yes, because of my phone. Like sometimes I'm just like, I just want to burn it. Like phones are so great, but they're also terrible. Like a phone will give you reasons to love your life the same way that it'll give you a million reasons to hate it. Like that feeling of like impending doom, that those feelings of comparison, like those feelings of just being addicted to your phone. Like I'm personally, I'm not even really necessarily addicted to my phone. I'm addicted to like how my phone makes me feel, which again is addicted to the phone, but I like to think of it that other way. Like I'm addicted to looking at my TikTok and seeing how many views I got. I'm addicted to seeing if a video went viral. It never does, but knock on wood. Um, Like I'm addicted to looking just to see because I'm curious. I'm addicted to likes. I'm addicted to how many listens I got on my podcast. I'm addicted to how many views I got on my podcast. I'm addicted to... I'm addicted to a lot of things about the phone. I'm addicted to tweeting. Tweeting bad. I love to tweet. I'm addicted to always being on Twitter and always refreshing the timeline. I'm not as addicted to TikTok because I don't know. Lately, TikTok hasn't really been eating. Like, I'll see like a good a good TikTok here and there, but it's hard for me to be on there for long periods of time. A lot of times because I am being so conscious of how much time I'm spending on the internet now outside of Twitter. But I've just really been trying to cut down on that because I'm not really proud of being on my phone as much as I am. Like, I feel like nobody's proud of how much they're on their phone, but I'm on my phone a lot. And um, I don't know. Like, I feel like I just really, I just need to tighten up a little bit more. And like, when I wasn't looking at like my views and likes and comment section like I felt like I was missing out because I do want to be a part of the conversation like I made the video I made the content I do want to be in the comments talking to people and stuff but it's also like dang my mental though like I just get so obsessed with the numbers and the analytics like I just know that I have to I just I can't and it kind of sucks because I do care and I do want to know how my videos are doing and what's not working and what is working, but it's not really healthy for me. So I just have to let that go. And the times when I wasn't looking at the likes and the comments and the views and stuff, I was actually really enjoying it. Like I felt like a lot of energy to keep creating and keep doing this, that, and the third. But when I look at the views and I look at the likes and I'm not happy with them, that's when it's like, Maybe I should give this up. Maybe I should just stop. Maybe I should focus on something else. And I don't like being in that headspace of feeling like I'm not doing exactly what I always wanted to do. Like, I've always wanted to do this. Like, I've been doing this forever. Like, I started making YouTube videos in high school, my sophomore year. And I had always watched YouTube. I just never knew that it was so easy to, like, just grab a camera or a phone and just start doing what you want to do. And, and I'm really happy to have the access to do that, but I've been doing this for so long 
And it's like, mm, like hopefully one day something will stick. And I kind of finally found something that's kind of sticking, kind of, sort of. And, and then I'm just critiquing it. Like, I feel like I can just never be happy with like what I have right now. But at the same time, I feel like it, sometimes it can be hard to be happy about what you have right now because then you get nervous about being complacent and that's what I get really nervous about is like being okay with what I've got and then it never doing anything else and never striving for anything greater because I just accepted that that's what that's as good as it was going to get and that's overall overarching I feel like that's the main root of this episode this week is that is just exactly what I just said. Like, you know, you want to strive and be the best that you can be. And that's hard to do. Yeah. I think, I think I ate that this time, but honestly, I really wish that I remembered what I just said a couple minutes ago, but I don't remember. And it wasn't even a couple minutes ago. It was a couple seconds ago, but Yeah, that's what I'm struggling with. And I'm glad that I can come on here and talk this week. Um, I don't really have anything else to say. I have something else like I could talk about, but I'm not really feeling it. It's kind of late. Like it's 4 a.m. I should really go to sleep so I can go to work tomorrow. Like I should really tighten up and be a real adult. But I did want to come on here and give you guys an episode this week, like whether or not I'm proud of this one or not. I think it was important for me to sit here and show up for me. Um, So yeah, I don't think I'm probably not going to do promo for this week because I'm going to be overthinking the feelings that I shared. I'm probably just going to post about it on my Instagrams and hope that the people who subscribe are going to watch and that they stick around for longer than the first few minutes of the episode. And um, yeah, this was really nice, I think. Um... Yeah, I actually was going to talk about this thing from this basketball podcast that I watch. But if I'm honest, I don't really feel like being political right now. Like, I think that's something that I could have done at like two o'clock, but it's 4 a.m. now. And I think that sometimes you just have to go and cut your losses. And that's that's how I'm cutting my losses today. Anywho. If you liked my braids this week, leave a comment. Aren't they so cute? Oh my gosh. I work so hard. Anyways. But yeah, if you want to follow me on social media, um, feel free to do that. All of the episodes, if this is your first episode listening to this podcast and you stuck around this long, all of the episodes aren't me being in distress and super down bad and talking about my feelings and emotions. But sometimes it does come to that. It does come to me having a 47 minute yap session and a 24 minute therapy session at the beginning of the episode sometimes it comes down to that and I think that's what makes this podcast fun you know who else is just out there doing what I do like really ask yourself that no one I'm giving icon but yeah if you want to go and um, follow me on social media everything's in my link tree down below please follow me on Spotify I will always follow back I love having Spotify friends because I like to be on the desktop version and seeing what other people are listening to I love to make playlists I love to do all the things I love to make content I just I just want to showing up for me I just want to show up for me so bad but um yeah this was nice this was really cool um I'm gonna be gone but I really do want people to interact with this episode so if you have any comments Um, or if you just like want to share something, feel free to do that. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go follow me, subscribe, like do all the things. If you want to do that, I'm not pushy. I'm not going to force you to do that, obviously, because I'm not next to you and I can't hold you at like gunpoint or anything. So yeah, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go. This was really nice this week, but I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.